video. So today I want to talk about some of the external symptoms of endometriosis that maybe don't get as much attention as the internal symptoms, but that are definitely, definitely just as bad, if not worse for some of these. Um, no, you can't diagnose endometriosis based on your external symptoms. However, um, it's sometimes it's helpful to know that these are things that are linked to the endometriosis. So sometimes that can be helpful to know. Um, the first one is that it's really common for people with endometriosis to have a lot of bruising. The logic behind that is that people with endometriosis tend to be anemic or have low blood cell counts um, from chronic bleeding and whatnot. So uh, that of course causes a lot of bruising and mysterious markings. Like I <laughs> seriously will have like a bruise like this big. I have no idea where it came from. You would think that a bruise that big, you would be like, oh yeah, I walked, you know, into the coffee table at one in the morning. Or, no, no idea. They just appear and they take forever to go away. So another one is the famous and dreaded endo belly. If you've had it, you know what I'm talking about. It's this magic way that you can look three, four, five months pregnant in a matter of hours. I can go from having a perfectly flat stomach to looking like I'm at least in my first trimester of a pregnancy, um, just based on the swelling and anger on the inside of <laughs> my abdomen. Um, not only is that kind of embarrassing because there's no way to like really conceal that, but also it's really painful and really uncomfortable. Like that's one of the reasons why I hate jeans and I wear like elastic waisted pants almost exclusively because it's so uncomfortable to have a band around your belly pushing in. It's just really terrible. And then personally, I work in an office, so I'm sitting at a desk, like in a chair for hours on end. So I make a point of like getting up and walking around frequently and things like that. But there's not, in my experience, been too much that I can do about that. Sometimes if I take ibuprofen, that helps, and I think that might be the anti-inflammatory part of that, um, but it doesn't always help, and I, it's pretty terrible. It's pretty terrible. It, it makes a difference in what clothes you want to wear. It makes a difference in how you feel about yourself and how confident you are in what you're wearing and who you're with and what you're, you know, it, it makes a difference. So the last thing that I have... <laughs> is probably going to seem pretty superficial, especially in the grand scheme of this whole condition. But the worst external symptom that I have had is acne. And I know that, that you're thinking like, oh my gosh, your skin is amazing. It's so beautiful. It's porcelain and lovely. And that could never be a problem. And you're probably just thinking it's teeny tiny little pimple every once in a while. No, 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 no. I assure you. Let me show you a photo. This is uh, two years ago. This is gonna be like my before and after photo. For real, my face. Y'all, look. Let me get right in there for you. It's terrible. It's terrible. Thank goodness there's an adorable baby in the picture to balance it out. <sighs> my face would be broke out constantly. It was my forehead, my chin, my cheeks, my everything was a complete and total mess. I could go to bed perfectly fine and wake up the next day and it's just, my face is a pizza. Absolutely ridiculous. And it was really frustrating because my skin was relatively normal, normal, fine, up until I'd say like my late twenties. And like in my wedding photos, my skin is beautiful, no problems. And then just out of the blue, <laughs> my skin just it just was a mess and I kid you not when I say I tried everything I became like a platinum plus member at Ulta Beauty within like the first six months of the year because I was literally trying everything that they had high end low end whatever I spent probably close to a thousand dollars in under a year just trying all of these different things spot treatments cleansers masks 
serums and I, everything that I could think of. I went to an allergist, nothing. It, it was just terrible. And the fact that I was like a grown woman out in the public and I can't even conceal, like it wasn't even concealable. I don't wear, I'm not like a full coverage kind of makeup person anyway, but I was buying more and more makeup and I couldn't even conceal what I had. And it, if it wasn't the color or the scaliness of it, it was that it was like protruding from my skin. Like it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. So around the time that I got that, a few months later um, is when I had my second surgery. And that's how I knew when I woke up from my second surgery, within a week, my skin was clearing on its own. And that was amazing to me. And the OBGYN surgeon, he was really proud of himself. He's like, oh, that means we did a really good job. It means the surgery, you know, really helped. And I'm like, well, that's great. I'm really happy about that. Then six months later, it was back. Go figure. So what I ended up finally having to do is I went to a dermatologist and I tried, oh, she prescribed I think, two different kinds of antibiotics, another over-the-counter cream and then some Retin-A cream. And then, you know, of course she's telling, recommending different soaps and things to use and none of that worked. So eventually I had to jump, not, I, I was like, look, I've heard um, a lot of people are hesitant about Accutane, but is that something that we could do? And she was like, oh, well, yeah, if that's something you want to do. And I was like, okay, well, let's, let's do that. And then she explained that her hesitation is because, of course, most people my age in their early 30s are thinking about children. And if you're planning to become pregnant, trying to become pregnant, or in any way seeing this in your immediate future or near future, Accutane is not something that you want to do. It's like a guarantee that with such a high dose of vitamin A in your system, that you're guaranteeing that you're going to have um, some sort of a birth defect. Even if they don't even want women that are pregnant or nursing to handle Accutane, um, even if you immediately stop it when you find out that you're pregnant. Apparently, like for most cases, it's too late. And so they take this like really seriously. She's like, well, I just didn't even consider it for you because you know, you're so young and I just thought that you would want, you know, you wouldn't be able to take it if you were planning on having children. And I'm like, I'm not really planning on having children. So if we could just uh, take care of that now, that would be great. And then as it turns out, some of the criteria for taking Accutane is that you have to have a a monthly lab test to test your liver enzymes and then also to test for pregnancy if you're, you know, of a uterus. And like you have to go in every month and this takes months for it all to work. So luckily I was able to coordinate with my OBGYN and he actually wrote a note that says patient is non-childbearing. So I didn't have to do that monthly lab work for the pregnancy test because for me, it's not going to happen anyway. So he just I mean, if there's going to be any advantages to infertility, if there's going to be any way that this is going to have a benefit for me, I'm all about it because I don't want to have to pay for the lab work every month. I don't want to have to take time off to go do this every month. And I'm <laughs> and so one day I was like, hey, there's a perk. Yay. Oh, it was ridiculous. So I was able to coordinate that though with my OBGYN and with the dermatologist. And so we worked it out together. And so, um, I did start the Accutane and immediately my skin was so much better, immediately. And they're supposed to like progressively up the dose and everyone's like, oh, these side effects are so terrible. They're so horrible. You have um, dry skin and dry patches. And look, I don't know what it is. Accutane was made for me because it worked beautifully. I did not have any of the side effects that they were complaining about or that are really common for people. I didn't have any of those issues. And um, so I got to take like a super high dose and get done with the whole course really quickly. So um, it took me about six months and my skin is crystal clear. It's really rare, I think, really rare that I have any kind of a breakout. Um, but if I do, I, and it's along like the jawline or anything like that, I know that it's typically hormone related and 
in most cases, if I am having like a flare up of endometriosis, you can probably see it on my face, but at least it will go away. But prior to taking the Accutane, it would not go away. It would just get worse and worse and worse. And again, let me refresh your memory. Y'all, no joke, no joke, it's so terrible. The worst thing. I know it's superficial and I don't really care because it's still one of the worst things. And I just felt like it was kind of like a slap in the face. If I had to deal with all this other crap, why do I have to deal with that too? That was stupid. I don't like it. So anyway, just a discussion on how endometriosis is inside and outside and has a far reaching, uh, far reach basically. So if you uh, have any other external symptoms, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I hope you find this informational and don't forget to subscribe. Take care.